In my opinion, The Goonies is one of those movies that will always remain timeless. I think part of the reason it's endured for generations of fans is because the kids in the movie behave like real kids. They curse. What is that? Oh shit, what? Make jokes at each other's expense. You know, I got some naked pictures of your mom. Taking a bath? <laughs> Wanna buy him? What? Real cheap. <laughs> and get up to plenty of mischief. Shame, shame! Know your name! <laughs> Come on, Gran! Slip in the tongue! When you look beyond that, though, The Goonies succeeds in being just an incredibly fun adventure film, with great performances from its child and adult cast. Kids suck. Not to mention a tightly paced script from Chris Columbus. Look, how's that? How's that? Oh, you idiot! You put it on upside down! Dork! If God meant to do it that way, you'd all be pissing in your faces! Looks fine to me. And a great director at the helm, the late Richard Donner. But as perfect as the movie feels as is, there was a lot more footage shot that ended up dying on the cutting room floor. Don't say that! Never say that! Goonies never say die! Uh, sorry, Mikey. What I mean is there wasn't just some additional dialogue that was cut, but rather entire subplots and intricate set pieces. Well, there was cool stuff. You know the scene with the skull and it's the go to the bathroom scene? That scene was written where the, it was going to fill up with water. And we were all going to get stuck in there, and the water's getting taller and taller and taller, and like, you can't breathe, and I can't remember, I think it was Brandt who goes down and realizes that there's a plug at the bottom, and we're trying, and then finally somebody unplugs the thing, and the water all goes down, and we're fine, and it reveals the next, you know, path that we go on. One that featured two gorillas running wild throughout Astoria, and another that had the Goonies battle a giant octopus. While some of these scenes have survived in some fashion, others are either available in really poor work print quality, or exist only in storyboards and production stills. There are plenty of little remnants of these deleted sequences within the final cut, though. The octopus was more scary. Oh, no. Yeah, it was more dangerous. They all make for an interesting tale, in showcasing how different the movie could have been. Oh, yeah, sure! So much like the Goonies on their quest to find the lost treasure of One-Eyed Willie, let us try to find the lost version of the Goonies. The Goonies is a special movie for me not only because it's been a favorite of mine since childhood, but also because it's the first movie that I discovered deleted scenes for. I grew up with a standard Warner Brothers clamshell VHS of the movie. One of my friends, however, had a VHS tape that contained a version taped off of cable. It was while watching this version at his house as a kid that I began to notice several differences between his version and mine. The first thing I noticed in this cable edit was that the scenes where Mouth translates Mrs. Walsh's instructions for Rosalita were cut short. The bedroom line about the drugs and the hallway line about the attic were both gone. Siempre hay que sebrar las drogas as well as the entire Statue of David sequence. To make up for this and other scenes later on that were cut to please the cable censors, a scene was included which featured the Goonies stopping at a convenience store on their way to the Fratelli's hideout. In this scene, Mikey compares the treasure map to a modern one, Chunk helps himself to a snack, and Mouth catches up on some reading. This scene is important because it's also where the Goonies would have encountered Troy, Steph, and Andy first in the story. They just don't make rolling papers like this anymore. Troy, cut it out! <laughs> cut, cut it out! What's going on? Hey, you know, the way you're puffing on the cigarette kind of reminds me of something. You know? Oh yeah, what's up? Tell me, kiss your mama. This results in Bran showing up to defend his younger brother from Troy. Nobody hits my brother except me. The scene ends when the Goonies once again leave Bran behind, and would have led directly into the scene where Troy takes Bran for a ride, which is his revenge for what took place at the store. I just can't wait until Monday when my father kicks all you trash out in the street where you belong. This convenience store scene at least gives some context to Troy's character for nearly killing Bran, beyond just the fact that he's a jerk. Excluding that, this scene really doesn't do much to aid the story, but I'll never forget encountering it for the first time, as it became my introduction to the concept of deleted scenes. There was another scene that was also included in some cable edits of the movie that I definitely remember seeing as a kid. 
It takes place right before the Goonies enter the old restaurant. Here, Data displays more of his gadgets, which naturally all fail. It appears that in the script, and even in some production stills, that Data utilized far more gadgets than appear in the final cut. This magazine article written to promote the movie shows one of these gadgets, a device called the Intimidator, which appears to have filled Data up like a balloon. Again, these are just some minor plot elements that were mostly cut due to timing purposes. So let's look at something a little more substantial. Bonzo and Bertha, the escaped gorillas. Evidently, this was a sequence championed by producer Steven Spielberg. As strange as it sounds in the context of the plot in The Goonies, these two gorillas actually had an entire subplot, which was scripted, storyboarded, and shot. The introduction of the gorillas into the story would have come about when the Goonies are banging on the pipes underground to signal for help. As shown in the final cut, this wreaks havoc amongst the town. One of these consequences would have somehow involved freeing animals from the Astoria Zoo. Rather than using actual gorillas, stunt performers were cast and put inside a pair of gorilla suits made by Rick Baker, originally for Greystoke The Legend of Tarzan. Made just a year prior in 1984, Greystoke was a huge box office disappointment for the studio. Therefore, it makes sense that they attempted to reuse elements of that production, especially considering the gorilla suits in Greystoke were pretty impressive. After being freed from the zoo, the two gorillas would then hijack a golf cart and later Troy's Mustang, leading to a chase sequence throughout the town. The gorillas would then pop up periodically throughout the rest of the movie. Spielberg was so passionate about this subplot that Donner convinced him that he should direct it himself. And so he did. I, I was called, we shot in November, I was called in December, I had to go down to Burbank and shoot a scene for Steven uh, teaching my son how to play golf while the, the apes came and stole our red golf cart. You know, the, the circus apes, their thing was stealing red vehicles. They, they were seen, there were sh uh, shots of them stealing Troy's red Mustang and, and that sort of thing, and it all went away. Aside from a few behind the scenes photos, a very rough work print of part of this sequence surfaced a few years ago. Director Richard Donner said this footage was searched for in preparation for a making of documentary in 2010, but nothing substantial was ever found. Apparently, the sequence was cut when Richard Donner decided to reshoot the ending of the movie in California's Bodega Bay. In the original ending shot, the same sequence took place, but rather at the Walsh's house in the Goondocks, instead of the beach. Again, only a few stills and work print clips have survived from this scene, but they are noteworthy as they show Sloth in a new wardrobe, now being embraced as part of Chunk's family. It was at this original ending filmed in Astoria that the gorillas would surface again in Troy's Mustang, only to be finally apprehended by the police. In choosing to reshoot this ending, the gorilla storyline lost its conclusion and had to be cut. Honestly though, from everything I've read, I wouldn't be surprised if when reshooting the ending, Richard Donner had secret motivations to remove the gorilla subplot in the process. Speaking of the reshot ending, there was one big question I always had as a kid, and still do as an adult. After the Fratelli surface and are captured, Chunk makes this declaration to Sloth. You're gonna live with me now. Yeah, I'm gonna take care of you. <laughs> it always struck me as odd that he never cleared this with his parents, because it seems like a huge deal. When looking for answers on this, the most concrete information I could find comes in the form of the Goonies novelization in which Chunk says to his parents, His name is Sloth, and he's my new friend. And Dad, if they take away our house and we have to move to New York, I thought maybe we could adopt him, because they're going to take his mom to prison for sure, so they'd put him in a home somewhere, and that wouldn't be any good for him, and he's my friend. So maybe we could adopt him, and get him a job with the New York Jets, or with the Rangers as head goalie. And then later, it turns out that Sloth was bar mitzvahed, taking up the name Jason Sloth Cohen.
As movie novelizations often used copies of the script as a basis, this dialogue at least confirms that Chunk asked his parents for permission to adopt Sloth. I love you, Chunk. Oh, I love you, Sloth. <laughs> there remains an interesting line in the reshot ending that also hints at a deleted scene, though. Yeah, well, your life's in danger. The octopus was boy scary. Oh, yeah, octopus. it was boy dangerous. As a kid, I always just thought this line implied that the Goonies were making things up, as kids do especially when it's implied that Chunk has a habit of doing so. Okay, Brand, Michael Jackson didn't come over to my house. He's a bad turn. But his sister did. It works in the context of the scene, but it wasn't until much later on that I discovered another deleted scene that finds the kids battling a giant octopus in the cavern housing One-Eyed Willie's pirate ship. I said stop it! Stop what? I'm not doing anything. Don't play dumb. Ugh. <laughs> I said, stop it! Ow! What are you hitting me for? I swear to mouth! I mean, who do you think you are anyway? What? 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 <laughs> this would have essentially been the final climax of the movie. As it was before the age of CGI, the octopus had to be practical. It was designed by Rob Berman and came in at over 32 feet. The octopus was also teased in the marketing of the movie, including trading cards, and later even in Cyndi Lauper's music video tie-in. Fortunately though, this scene has survived in full, also included in some cable edits of the movie. As you can see, the effect doesn't look as good as intended. It seems everyone involved felt it looked too awkward to be seriously menacing, and the scene was rightfully cut. The octopus... It just always sucked. And it was just, the thing about it is I think they were like smoking a lot of pot. <laughs> While these scenes discussed wouldn't have altered the overall structure of the movie too much, they would have definitely altered the pacing. In the two other videos I have made covering lost versions of 80s movies, both John Hughes films, the comment sections are flooded with those who swear to remember cut footage included in cable edits they grew up watching. While today it seems movie studios have either lost or refused to spend the funds necessary to restore deleted footage, the cable airings during the 80s and 90s tell a much different story. As with the case in The Goonies, the only reason we have some of these scenes is because people taped them off cable decades ago. I'm convinced that in attics and basements all around the country, there exist cable versions of virtually every 80s movie. The Goonies is kind of proof of that. Come on, give me a nice wet licorice kiss. Yeah, uh, uh, uh. Alright, gotcha! Now get out from behind there, you're ruining the painting! That's you're right. ruining my joke! So, much like the Goonies themselves, the next time you're at your childhood home, maybe search the attic for some of your old VHS relics. They may lead you on your own adventure. As for The Goonies, as it exists in its final cut, it will always be one of those perfect kids movies. It feels like the first viewing is a rite of passage during childhood, and will be for generations to come. Despite this, it's fun to look back at these lost relics, to see just what an amazing, elaborate, and fun production The Goonies truly was. I never really looked at Goonies, maybe I made a mistake. I never saw it as a, as a fantasy or a fairy tale, it's a... Uh... It's a true story. We just happen to be documenting the lives of a group of kids in a little town in Astoria, and the kids call themselves the Goonies. <laughs>